All right, what's up, my friends? Wait, wait, didn't we just do this? Wait, Colin, we just did this, right? This is the complete set review for Foundations, the starter collection, okay? So, you've already watched my set review for the main set. So, Foundations is a very, very large product. Uh, there is a main set, like 280 cards. That's the cards you'll find in booster packs that you'll be drafting with. That set review is already complete. Look for that one already on YouTube. I go through the entire set. That's the main set, okay? There's also a starter set, it's a starter box, like 70 bucks. Uh, great product, I think, honestly. You can build multiple decks out of it. It's a great product for newer players, great product for building your first standard deck. That's awesome. But what's important about the starter kit is that all those cards are also legal in standard. There's a bunch of cool reprints in the set, about 145 reprints, and I'm gonna be going over those today. So that is going to be uh, a bunch of cards that are reprints for standard. So this today's review is all about standard. None of these cards are draftable and they don't really have an impact on other formats, but they're very important for standard specifically because these cards will be legal for the next five years. All right, five years is a, is a long time. So that's what we're doing today. So this is gonna be a little bit faster than usual as there's no cards to review for limited. Some of these cards are limited level cards uh, because obviously starter magic, you play simple cards, uh, but because they are draftable, uh, there's no relevance to them being in the draft format. So we'll go pretty fast on them. So I'm going to go faster than usual with an eye on important cards for standard and uh, and so on. So again, watch the old set review. This is this set review. And then I'm going to do one more set review uh, of the jumpstart for foundations, which has no relevance paper at all. Uh, nothing is new in paper, just all reprints. But on Arena, a few cool cards like Dark Confidant, which are not on Arena, but will be relevant for historic and timeless are in there. So I'll do that also. All right. So big set, exciting set, a lot of cards. That's the deal. It's not as complicated as it sounds, realistically. It really isn't that bad. All right. So we're going to go over that. We're going to do all this. And uh, let's just get right to it. Brought to you by Team JB Obbies. Holidays are coming up, folks. All right. And if you want to get a phenomenal gift for friends, for family, check these freaking things out. All right. Handmade, handcrafted puzzle boxes. Really, really cool. Just a real eye-opening, like, oh, wow, what is this uh, for your gifts uh, for the holidays? Really good stuff. Check them out. TeamJBHobbies.com. Promo code Jim5. Bob is enough for your order. TeamJBHobbies.com. So we're starting off with white, all right? And our first card here is Adamant Will. This is a limited pump spell, but again, there is no limit for the set. So this is mostly, mostly a relevant card. Two mana protection spells just aren't good enough. If this costs one, this would be a standard playable card. It does not, so we're going to move on. Nothing too exciting there. Ancestor Dragon is next. You have a six mana, five, six flying. Whenever one or more creatures you control attack, you gain one life for each attacking creature. Important to note, this is not individual triggers, okay? So if I have five creatures attacking, I will not get five instances of gaining life. So my Ajani's Pride Mate will not get five counters the way it's templated. Making this card basically just a bulk starter rare. Uh, this is just kind of whatever it is what it is. So uh, just a bulk starter card, nothing really more. Uh, that limitation is just too damning and it isn't really that good otherwise. Angel of Vitality. Another card that's also not super exciting. Uh, three out for a 2-2 flyer. If you gain life, gain life that much life plus one and uh, creature gets plus two, plus two as long as you have 25 or more life. This kind of like payoff card for uh, for gaining life is, isn't really good enough by itself. Uh, the floor of a 2-2 flyer for three isn't good enough for constructed really. So for our starter life gain deck, sure, this card is fine, but for a competitive standard play, this card's not going to get there. Angelic Destiny is an interesting card, though. So this is a, uh, a pretty flashy mythic from uh, one of the old core sets. Four mana, four, eight, an, an aura enchant creature. Four, four, sorry, creature has plus four, plus four, has flying, first strike, and is an angel. This is the types. And then most importantly, when the enchanted creature dies, this card goes back to your hand. It's the Rancor ability. So, of course, the big issue with auras is you play an aura on a creature, they just cast Go for the Throat on it. Now you've gotten two for one. This card gets the uh, the creature back, which is super nice. And this is a really huge stat boost, right? Plus four, plus four, flying in first. So it makes your creature almost unkillable. Put on a lifelinker, pretty good too. So I think uh, if there is like an aura slash enchantment deck in standard, which there are a lot of tools for currently, this could be a player in that deck. Uh, and then, of course, you just put it on the next creature once that creature dies, which is great too. This card's cool, honestly. Uh... Gets, gets, I, I misspoke. It's, it's, it's self back, like Rancor, like I said. So uh, this card's cool, honestly. You know, possible fringe player, probably like a two of maybe in like an aura deck if there is some sort of aura deck. Most important that it can protect, protect your own creatures. Uh, but it's pretty cool, honestly. Pretty cool card. Definitely a card to keep an eye out if you are building decks of that type. Angelic Edict is next. And this card is a, a limited removal spell. It's not even that good. We're going to move on. 
Archway Angel, pretty cool card. So you'll you'll see here, uh, this is a six mana, three, four flyer. EDB gain two life for each gate you control. The gates return, if you were playing Magic uh, about five years ago uh, with the Ravnica, one of the Ravnica sets, uh, gates were kind of a big deal, honestly. And uh, the gate cards are all up, whatever they look. We'll get some more of that a little bit later. And uh, this was a playable cyborg card in the gate stack against aggro decks. Uh, you cast this thing, gain 10 life or whatever. Pretty powerful. That being said, it's a very narrow sideboard card. Uh, it's specifically for the gates deck if you're playing white against mod or red kind of burn decks. But there is a lot of burn in the set. So if there is a gate deck, this could definitely be uh, in that as a sideboard card and one to you know keep an eye on and watch out for. Bally Rush Banneret. We got our sleeper card for the white starter collection here. This is like a deep, deep cut. Uh, Kifkin, right? Anyone? Kifkin? Throw yourself in next time and rid us of your stupidity. <laughs> Two mana for a 2-1. It's a Kifkin soldier for all you Lorin fans out there. And we are returning to Lorin at some point in the semi-near future. So the Kithkin type might matter. But the important type here is Soldier. All right, this is a 2-1 Soldier for two that makes all your Soldiers cost one less. Soldiers are a supported archetype in Standard right now. And there are a few good Soldiers that cost two, uh, namely uh, the Reinforcements card and the Zephyr, like uh, EDB Save Your Own Stuff card, uh, that are Soldiers that really want to cost one mana. Making this card a definite possible sleeper. We got a raid from Amy. Amy, you're the best. Thanks so much. Uh, if you don't watch Amy, you're dumb. Uh, I know Amy is doing her set review also. Hi, my name is Jim. Promoted player, full time content creator. Welcome. First, hit the follow button. Hi. Hi there. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So we're doing the set review of the starter collection. Already did the main set review on my YouTube. Check that out. These are all the starter cards that we legal and standard. Uh, so we're covering just standard, not draft or anything else. They're not legal there. Cool? Cool. So. Uh, but yeah, this card's a pretty cool soldier. I think this card is definitely a fringe card in standard, but I think there are enough good soldier cards where the cost reduction is a very powerful effect. This could be a player in standard. Not likely, but definitely a niche player and definitely a powerful card. These cost reduction effects, effects are quite powerful. I want to draw attention to that. It's pretty cool. And then again, once the new Lauren set comes out, this card also be, could, could be cool there. So sleeper card for white in the starter collection is Bally Rush Banneret. Up next is Bishop Soldier. 2-2 two -two lifelink. This is a limited card. Obviously not playable, constructed, and uh, we can move on here. Charming Prince. Right, we're going right from a, a sleeper card to a trap card. People freaking love this card. Magic players love options. What Magic players don't realize is that a lot of these charm cards that give you options do so at a very poor rate. Think of an option card, a modal card like this, a charm card, if you will, like an all-in-one printer, all right? Yes, it can print, it can copy, it can fax. I can do all of these things. It doesn't do any of them well, though. Still a piece and we want our magic cards to do things well. You know, when it comes to these charms, you want at least one of the effects to be worth the rate you're paying for it. For example, on Boros Charm, two mana for four damage, that's a good deal. The rest is all just kind of gravy. On this card, none of these effects are worth two mana. Uh, two to the gains two, not worth it. Two to the gain, sorry, gains three, not worth it. Two to the scries two, not worth it. And then two to, two to the make and blink, not really worth it either. This card saw some play when it was legal the first time around, mostly because of Yorian. Uh, this card was able to start a loop with Yorian, where you would blink the Charming Prince, it would come back, it would blink the Lorian, and you could do loops and stuff like that too. So at first, some sort of blink deck in standard, this card could be a player in it, but it's not a draw at all. I think this card is much worse than you think. It is cool at Manifest Red. I will give it that as far as the being a blink effect for that. But I think overall, this card's a very, very fringe player, but a card that players are really, really drawn to and play far more often than they should. So fringe player, nothing more. Charming Prince. I, I just ain't that charm. Sorry. Nope. Not charmed. Crusader of Odric. Is this a rare downshift? The metaphor, a star star, human soldier, two good types. Power and toughness equal to the number of creatures that you control. Was this a rare? I feel like this is a rare. Uh, this feels like a card that's mostly just a limited card. Uh, these days, this would need to be uh, really, really powerful. Uh, have a lot of extra abilities on there to be good. This is the kind of card that would have been okay uh, in like, you know, 1999. But we're playing Magic here in 2024. This is a draft card. And there's no draft for this set, so. Darling Marshall, 2 for a 2-2 flyer. 5 mana, pump the team. This would be a really good limited card. Uh, uh, unfortunately though, uh, as a constructed card, it's not like that far off. I feel like, uh, it is a cat, which is relevant soldier, which is relevant Two two flyer for two is okay, but it's just, you know, not really there. Just a good starter card. Pretty cool. 
Deadly Repost to end up for an instant. The damage to creature, tap creature and he gains you life. Just a limited card, and there is no limited, so not very good. Devout Decree. One of the uh, the big things here is that we are getting uh, a cycle of really powerful color hosers in most of the colors. Uh, Devout Decree is the white entry. Two mana for a sorcery, exile creature or planeswalker that is black or red. Okay, this is a really good scribe card. I need scribe one too. I've not enough. So being a sorcery here is a little bit tough, but but an, a two mana exiling an unconditional removal spell with a little bit of upside is fantastic. This is going to be a great sideboard card for your white decks for the next five years. Which is a little confusing, honestly. We'll see the blue and black entries in the sideboard card are really, really good. Uh, which surprises me because, like, they're going to be legal for five years. We'll see. Uh, but Devout Decree is a very good sideboard card, a great craft, uh, a card you'll be playing a ton over the next five years, and uh, just good stuff, you know? Definitely a little worse against, like, pure red aggro decks. You know, it's not a card like... Uh, uh, what was that card called? It's like, you know, two damage to a, a red creature to gain two life or whatever it was. Uh, help. I don't know. I can't think of it. But, but it's more flexible and powerful. Great sideboard card. This enchant, also a great sideboard card. I think this card's already in standard, uh, but now it's there for for five years. Good thing to have access to. Great card. Elspeth Smite, also a card that will be legal now for five years. This is a card seeing a lot of play in standard right now. It is obviously currently legal already, so not really a big deal as far as format changing, but being legal for five years is a big deal. Giving white a one mana exiling removal spell is pretty good. You know, not the best removal spell of all time. It's not as good as cut down is or whatever, but if you're playing white and Eva's effect, it's pretty good. Veldar Cup, fringe playable cyborg card. Um, the cat type is relevant in this set. If you need to kill an enchantment but want to have a threat also, it's fine. It's reasonable. You know, it can work. Just, you know, but nothing works. You know, fringe, fringe cyborg card. Feldar Retreat. This is a fun one. Uh, there's a number of landfall cards in the set, uh, both in the proper set as well as the starter set. And uh, this is not, not a pretty good one. It's a pretty, I can't, not, it's. You know, I just do things. A lot of talking in this set. Uh, it is a pretty good one. It is not a bad one. Uh, the format of four enchantment, landfall, make a 2-2 cat, or pump the team. Uh, cats, again, are relevant for the, being a kindred type in the set. You sh often use more as like a big mana payoff, where like you just play this, play a land, and you just keep playing lands and making threats. Uh, this is a, uh, a card that saw a little bit of play the first time around. And given the uh, the mono white decks in standard right now, they care about tokens and care about kind of going long. This card does that reasonably well. So I think it's going to be a fringe player in standard for sure. Pretty cool card. Fun reprint. I also like the new enchantment theme. It's going to be cool too. Fumigate Returns. Uh, for for a, a while, this was the best five mana super ever printed. Uh, Wrath of God, gain a life for each creature destroyed this way. It's good, but it's not even close to Sunfall. Uh, and then Day of Judgment's also in the main set too. So... Basically, this card I think has too much competition to be reasonable, uh, but it is a powerful card. You know, gaining five life when you cast a Wrath is pretty cool, but kind of overshadowed by Sunfall and Day of Judgment, so kind of kind of is what it is. One second, cards being a pain in the butt. No more Karn. Karn's gone. Sorry. Oh, I didn't pause it. God damn it. I have to edit it. I hate editing. Son of a bitch. Whatever. Next up is Herald of Faith. Five mana for a 4-3 angel. Never attacks a gain to life. Pure starter card. Uh, you know, not playable. Trunkit, obviously. It's just a starter card. Would be a pretty good draft card, but not even that good, honestly. So... Hinterland Sanctifier. This is actually a big one. So we have a, a rabbit, one mana, one, two. That is a soul warden for your own creatures. So every creature ETBs, gain one life. There is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of life gain stuff in this set uh, where uh, this kind of effect is very, very important, you know, from a Johnny's pride mate and so on and so forth. This is also a rabbit. So it uh, could be relevant with rabbit stuff. And then also relevant for possible bat cards, uh, which care about life gain too. This could be an important card. This is the kind of card where uh, it's not in the main set, but it is obviously legal and standard, and this could definitely be a linchpin card for a lot of these decks. 
Uh, definitely a card you're also going to see a lot in the kind of casual queues. I would not be surprised if many, many Magic players uh, have first deck is Foundations, Life Gain, Hinterland Sanctifier, a Giant's Pride Mate. It was super popular last time. I'm sure it popular this time also. So pack your uh, pack your anti-life gain stuff, folks, right? If you're playing on the ladder, uh, especially in the lower levels, all right? But this card's definitely a very, very real thing and uh, one to watch out for for all your life gain, folks. Ingenious Leonin, five minutes for a 4-4 cat soldier. Puts a counter on a creature you control if it's, if it's a cat. First strike, again, just starter card. Limited level card, not good enough for constructed. Inspiring Overseer, the metaphor A2 on flying, gain life and draw card when it ETBs, also an angel. Uh, this card, it's funny, uh, when this card was in limited in New Capenna, it was the best common in the set by far, like not even close. Uh, phenomenal card, so it is not in limited anymore. Uh, this is a fringe constructed card though. Uh, there is a lot of angel things happening in the set. Uh, Giada is a reprint in the main set as well as a bunch of other angel things too. And this is a pretty good like, you know, middle of the road, nuts and bolts kind of card for a deck like that. Uh, synergy card draw. It's cheap. It gains life. Totally, re totally reasonable card. So this here's a card that could show up at constructed. Uh, it's you know a, a little below rate, but could be kind of like that lynch that not the lynch bit, uh, that nuts and bolts kind of card that you know gets you there, greases the wheels and stuff. So cool card. Keep an eye out for it. Jassel Goldman, four and a four, a four four legendary cat warrior. First strike. Five mana attacking creature you control. Get plus X plus X one of turn. Rex the number of attacking creatures. Not quite there for Constructed. You know, a 4 4 first strike for 4. It sounds nice, but like, just doesn't do enough in Constructed uh, Modern Day Magic. So, this is going to be a banger on your starter decks, uh, but for Constructed, it's not really good enough. Too much uh, requiring other things to be good. Too much mana invested. Cool, though. Knight of Grace. What is this? Is this our best in show for white? Yes, it is, actually. Knight of Grace is a surprising reprint. This is uh, a callback to uh, White Knight and the many, many, many knights in Magic's history that have protection from black, where it's not complete protection from black, because protection is an awful mechanic. It's just awful. It is it is just terrible design, not fun at all. Whereas Knight of Grace uh, kind of treads the line well enough where it's good against black, but not like unbeatable. So two mana for a two-two with first strike. Has hexproof from black, so no cut down, no go for the throat, and so on and so forth. And then if a player controls a black permanent opponent um sorry any player i'm sorry my bad if you could draw a black permanent also this get it becomes it gets, it gets plus one plus oh and a three two first strike for two that is hard to kill is fantastic uh this card is great a card that a lot of folks are going to overlook until they're playing golgari mid-range or whatever and you they plop your opponent plops this thing down and you go oh wow and then again this card plays well with the black cards too, because if you control black permanent, it gets pumped also. So if you're playing a black white deck, this is naturally a three two most of the time, which is great too. So I think this card's a banger. Uh, I don't think there's a ton of like knight synergy in standard right now, uh, but it's a thing that kind of comes and goes. But this card's great. It'll be a really important card given that black is the best color in standard by eh, by a lot, I would say. Uh, so great card, great reprint, powerful card, Knight of Grace. Craft them now, uncommon, and uh, gonna be a big deal. This is a card we'll see, definitely see sideboard play. See possible main deck play as well. It is, uh, it is that good. Little Sky Hunter. Uh, not, not as good. Uh, this card was good 20 years ago back in Meriden. Uh, but 2-2 Flyer for, for White White is no longer a competitive magic card. So it is a cat. Put in your cat starter decks, but not so good. Little Vanguard. This is a, a really, really fringy life gain card. It is a cat, which is relevant. Again, there's a lot of cat synergy. Uh, and it can gain life. Uh, if you have enough creatures and stuff over and over and over again, which is cool, but this card is like, it's just not, not particularly powerful. The body's really small. needs a lot to get going here. It's a payoff. It doesn't really, uh, it's kind of an enabler, but only if you already paid off and even doesn't pay off that hard anyway. So, you know, could maybe see play in the right circumstances, but this is just a mostly really, really fringe card. Linden, the steadfast queen. White, 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 3-3 three, three Vigilance. Whenever a white creature you control attacks, gain one life. So it's important to note that this card is very different than the dragon. So if a dragon says whenever you attack, gain a life for each creature you control all in one shot, all in one trigger, this one produces all individual triggers. So if I attack with four Johnny's Pride Mates, I gain one life four times and pump them all four times. Uh, so this card is a lot better 
uh, at, at that triggering life gain stuff than uh, the dragon is, of course, and much cheaper. The problem is it's white, white, white. So it's most limited to mono white decks. So I think we'll probably keep this card out of constructed. Uh, but again, uh, got a chance in a life gain deck. Maybe your mono white angels card is reasonable also. It could be a one of or a two of. Uh, and then, of course, you're just going to see this card a lot, uh, especially early on in bronze, silver, and gold, when folks are just like, playing their uh, their life game decks and having a great time because there are a good number of life game payoffs in the format. So, Fringe card. I like this card. It's a fun card, honestly. It's pretty cool. Uh, good stuff. Lyra Dawnbringer. Another big angel returns. Five mana for a 5-5. Five, five, flying, first strike, lifelink, Baneslayer, angel, eat your heart out. It also has the ability of all other angels you control get plus someone's one lifelink. That's a big deal. So, this card is often sees play uh, or has sees play in Pioneer and has, has seen play in the past as just like a Bane Slayer Angel. So 5-5 five, five Flying, Lifelink, First Strike. That's a you know a big banger against Mono Red decks. Way to gain life, turn the corner of your control deck, and so on and so forth. But this card is also a Lord for all of your Angels, which is really, really good. Uh, and then also making note of the fact that there's a ton of Angel stuff in the set, Giada and more. So I think this card's actually kind of a banger. It is funny that the protection from Demons would be very, very relevant from Bane Slayer right now. But overall, Lyra is a much better card. So this is a real big deal. Uh, both in control sideboards and standard, uh, as well as impossible angel decks. Could be a main deck angel card or maybe a sideboard card against other red decks. Uh, but the effect is very, very powerful. Card's a banger. And uh, I'm glad I don't need to play against this card in uh, Foundations Limited. So there you go. Make a stand. Demand it for an instant. Creatures you control, plus also instructable. Uh, far too expensive for a trick to save your team. Uh, a lot of supers exile anyway. This card's just not very good. Mentor of the Meek. Uh, this card was an uncommon recently, right? Uh, power creep in action. This card was pretty cool like 15 years ago when it was first printed. Uh, it's not very good now. Uh, there are just many, many better ways to draw cards off your small creatures uh, that don't cost mana and they give you a better body than this. So Mentor of the Meek is just uh, a relic of times, unfortunately. So F's in chat, Mentor of the Meek. Moment of Triumph. Plus two, plus two, and gain two life. Limited combat trick. Uh, you, there's no way that you would want to gain life that bad in your life gain synergy deck, synergy deck that you want to play a bad combat trick, so just not very good. Pacifism. If there's some sort of, like, enchantment control deck or eerie control deck, this is a card that could maybe see play, uh, but there's probably a better version of the Golden Standard, so... Mm. Would have preferred uh, one of the older arts, too, but is it is. Prayer Binding. Four mana for an enchantment with flash from the ETB's exile up to one non-land permanence. Gain two life. Uh, there are just better O-rings in standard. Flash is not good enough here for a four-man armor spell. Uh, so not really, not really there. Regal Caracal, however, is there. This is a card that saw a lot of play the first time around, mostly as a sideboard card in control decks against red decks, uh, where this is a 3-3 that effectively makes two 2-2 two, two lifelinkers. But again, like Lyra, it saw a lot of play as like an anti-red sideboard card, but there's a lot of cat things happening in the set too. So there might be a cat deck. This could be a really good cyborg card against, uh, against, uh, you know, red decks, possible main deck card. Also, I'd be a little surprised if it showed up, but not crazy surprised. So it is definitely a possibility. There's a lot of cat things in the format and this could be a card that makes it release the dogs. The dogs getting in on the action. Um, the radiator isn't terrible. Uh, four one ones for four mana. Isn't that bad. But they're just like better token stuff in the format. And there isn't really any payoffs having dogs either. So it is what it is. It's fun though. Karn's out here. Car, sorry, Karn. You wanted to leave. So you missed the you missed the release of dogs card. Stasis Snare. Another O-ring with flash. Inconceivable. Sure. I mean, I guess. Again, this is a starter set, so like the coalition's a little weird. This one's better. You know, uh, at instant speed, this is certainly a better card and a card that could see a little bit of play. This only hits uh, creatures, not other permanents. So that probably uh, probably keeps it off the map. But it's up. I've cast this card before it's entered. It's not like yeah, outlandish. Sir Allen, the Lion's Call. Five mana for a 4-4. Four, four. First strike. Never it attacks. Other creatures you control, plus one, plus one to end of turn. Just a limited card. Not going to see play constructed. Cool starter card, though. Twin Blade Paladin, 4 mana for a 3-3. Gain life, put a counter on this. 25 life or more, has a double strike. This is just worse than the Angel. So again, this is a starter card payoff and nothing more. Valor Stance, this is a good card. Twin mana for an instant. Creature gets instructable or kills a creature toughness 4 or greater. This is uh, the rare viable 2 mana protection spell. 
you almost always want your protection spells to just cost one, not two, because it's just so much more flexible. But the fact that this can kill shield root, other things too, is a big deal. Destroy evil is probably a better card for as long as it's legal, uh, given the current density of enchantments. Uh, but um, this is a, a card that's cool to have around. You know, in the next five years, this card will definitely see play at some point in white sideboards. Zip. Z Z Zatalpa? Zatalpa, Primal Dawn. Eight mana for a 4 8, flying, double strike, vigilance, trample, indestructible. Mostly there to excite players who are uh, opening their boost packs for the first time and being like, oh my god, that's crazy. Uh, but Soul Flare is not legal and standard, therefore, this card is not relevant and standard. I guess there is like the, there is a, a black, like rare creature from the uh, Aftermath set that can take abilities of creatures, I think. So, not like outlandish but there's a much better keyword soup creature uh which we'll get to a little bit later in this uh in this uh oh, i'm sorry it was, it was, it's, in the, it's in the main set it's the eldrazi in the main set has seven abilities so that's uh that's that so that is white once again this is the starter collection cards for white our best in show is knight of grace our sleeper card is bally rush banneret and our strap card is charming prince there is no bomb in common because there is no limit for the starter collection these are cards only in a starter box that are legal and standard so blue's coming up like, comment, subscribe on YouTube, and uh, let's rock and roll.